So the first thing I did before actually building anything was I designed the coil on a program online called Java TC. And pretty much what I was trying to do is I was putting in different values for my different coils and the capacitor and the top load, trying to get the primary frequency to match the secondary frequency. And these have to be the same for the coil to be in resonance and work the way it's supposed to. Then I started winding the secondary coil. And to do this, I just built a little wooden jig and wound the coil with 27 gauge wire around a piece of PVC that I had lying around. And it took me about two and a half hours total to wind the whole thing. And then I just covered it in packing tape to protect the windings since they're kind of delicate. And then it was time to build the primary coil. And I needed something that would hold all the coils in place so I started to design something on SketchUp that I decided I would 3D print, and this is what I came up with. But then I realized it wouldn't really fit my print bed and I'd have to slice it and glue it together, so I kind of scrapped the idea and made something else. I decided I'd make the thing I was trying to print out of plexiglass by breaking some pieces off and then cutting some notches in four of those pieces and breaking them out with a flathead screwdriver to make some notches. And then I filed out the notches to make them all even. I had previously made this piece of wood for a base and then I just used some hot glue to glue all my little spacers on. And the hot glue ended up being really strong, which I was kind of surprised by, but it worked pretty well. Then I started laying some 10 gauge wire onto my spacers, which was pretty hard because I'm, it's basically a big copper spring, but I was eventually able to get it on. So as you can see, the coils came out kind of bent and uneven, so I just had to spend some time straightening those out by hand. But the coil was kind of looking oval shaped, and I realized I had glued one of the spacers too far in. So I had to rip that out and put some glue back on and re-glue it to the base. And then I had to mess with the coil a bunch more to get it to fit onto the realigned spacer. And this is the finished primary coil. I made it a little extra big. It was only supposed to have 5.6 turns, but I added a couple more turns for tuning. And then I glued a piece of insulation foam onto the base that would hold the secondary coil on. And now it was kind of looking like a Tesla coil. For the top load, I used some 3 inch dryer duct and put it in a circle and then covered it with some aluminum foil tape. And this was pretty easy to do and simple and cheap and it ended up working really well. But after I made that, I realized it looked a little big, so I made this smaller one, which looks like this. And I used a nail to make a breakout point and just stuck it into the dryer duct. And the top load fits onto the secondary coil by slipping over these popsicle sticks. Now I started working on the base that would hold all the electronics, and I cut out a bunch of these rods and started drilling them onto the base that I had cut out previously. So I got these four supports attached, and this is what the whole thing looks like with the whole coil on top of the base. Then I started building the primary circuit, and so here's the schematic. 
So you've got your wall socket, which is going to be 120 volts if you're in the US. So 120 volts AC. And that goes into the primary coil of your transformer, which is your power supply. And that's an iron core transformer, so that's the symbol for that. And this is the secondary coil of your transformer, which is the terminals of the transformer that you attach the, your wires to. And that's the spark gap that goes across those two wires. And then this goes into the primary coil of your Tesla coil, which is the big uh, copper one that I made with the spacers. And then you have your capacitor bank right there. So it's a pretty simple circuit. And then inside this box, that's your transformer, and I'm using a neon sign transformer. And then right here, you have your secondary coil, which is the one wound on the PVC with the thin wire. And this is not electrically attached to the primary coil in any way. It's, a, it's an air core transformer, and it, the electricity goes into it through inductance. So we'll start with the power supply. Um, I got this neon sign transformer um, by looking on Google for neon sign shops and calling the first one. And the guy at the neon sign shop gave me this old neon sign transformer for five bucks. And it's 15,000 volt, but one side is dead. So that means it's 7,500 volts on off of one side. And that's fine because you can just connect um, one of your sides to the terminal and one side to ground. And the, the case of the neon sign transformer is ground. And if you can't find one of these things uh, anywhere locally, you can usually get them on eBay for like 50 bucks. So that's not too bad. So then I wired it up and plugged it in and tested it. The way you do this is you connect your wire to the terminal, which is one with the big bushing on it, and then attach that to a wooden stick because you don't want to touch that wire because a little bit of insulation isn't going to protect you against 7,500 volts. And then if it works, that wire should arc like that to the case of the transformer. And like I said, that case is ground. So you should get a nice spark if that side works, and then you can test the other side. And that other side of mine, like I said, is dead, so it's taped up. But I didn't test it at all because I knew I only wanted one side of this thing anyway, because my Tesla coil is pretty small. And when you're using these things, you should know that they are dangerous. Like, if you touch one side, it's going to be a really nasty shock. And if both sides are working, and you touch both sides at the same time, it can easily kill you. So you should be really careful when you're using these things. So then I started in the spark gap. And to do this, I just put some bolts through a couple pieces of metal and ground them down on the grinder to make them a little more rounded, like this. And then I just drilled those, screwed those pieces onto a piece of wood. And that was it, my simple spark gap. Then I started wiring everything up, and the reason I was doing this before um, I wired up the capacitors is just because the capacitors hadn't come in the mail yet. Then I started on the capacitor bank, and to do this, I just uh, drilled a bunch of holes in a piece of plexiglass that I cut out that the capacitors were going through. For capacitors, I used the Cornell Dublier 942C20P1KF 0.1 microfarad. 2000 volt capacitors. So with 10 of these in series, I got a capacitor that was rated for 20,000 volts. Um, that's 0 0.01 microfarads, which is uh, 10 nanofarads. And when you're choosing your capacitors, what you should first do is figure out what your um, power supply is. And then you can use a calculator. I use one from a website called Deep Fried Neon. 
and that will tell you what the best capacitor is for your um, power supply and then you should design your coil around that power supply and capacitor band. So I started soldering the capacitor together in series and you need to solder resistors across the leads. I'm using half watt 10 mega ohm resistors because the capacitors will hold charge even after you to, uh, turn the coil off. And you can't just solder one big resistor across the whole capacitor bank because some capacitors will have positive voltage and some will have negative. And the resistor won't do anything to that, but the whole capacitor bank can still give you a shock. So here's the finished capacitor bank, and here it is attached to the base, soldered to the leads that go to the primary coil and the spark gap. And here is the finished primary circuit. I added that cooling fan because uh, I read that the spark gap can generate a lot of heat, and it also generates a lot of ozone, so that's just a clear everything away from there. And I also added this strike rail, and the purpose of this is so that arcs from the top don't hit the primary coil. Then the strike rail and the bottom of the secondary both connect to earth ground. And here it is, done. I ended up using the bigger top load because when I did more research, I found that it would probably work better than the smaller one I had made. And that's all I did to change it. It was ready to go. I drove this pipe into the ground for my earth ground, and then I was able to give it a test. So what happened there was I realized that these two capacitors were soldered too close together, and so it just arced between these two capacitors and nothing happened. So I just glued a piece of wood between the capacitors to prevent more arcing. So it worked, but it didn't work for long. It turned off by itself after a couple seconds. So I tried closing the spark gap a little bit more, and this definitely helped. So there you have it. It's done. It works. Thanks for watching.